Kelly Richards, and uh, I, have, I think I'm too close to the microphone. I work at the Public Defender's Office. My latest duties are uh, juvenile resentencings for people that were convicted and sentenced to life in prison when they were a juvenile. So this is a little bit different than the normal, but we saw a 13-year sentence. You can see the effect a 13-year sentence had. Um, I have several clients now that were less than 15, a 13-year-old girl uh, who was charged with a homicide, and it, it's a different scenario than what we normally see with just run-of-the-mill children that get in trouble. Uh, but these scientific principles apply to all of them. Uh, it seems like the courts, the United States Supreme Court and the Florida Supreme Court are understanding this, but uh, the, the local level, we still are struggling in having to fight to get our clients resentenced, even though uh, the United States Supreme Court said it was unconstitutional for children, juveniles, to be sentenced to life. They need to be afforded an opportunity uh, for release and to, so that they could show perhaps maturity and demonstrated um, abilities that they've grown up while they've been in prison. I've been involved, I have about uh, 16 of these cases now. Uh, they're very time consuming. Um, I have one, um, we recently negotiated and got a release for a young man who had served 26 years in prison without ever getting one single disciplinary report. Uh, I spoke with a prison expert and he said that there are 10 juveniles, or 10 inmates, not necessarily juveniles, that have never had a disciplinary report in their time in prison. And that he said that there's a list in Tallahassee, they're called the Fabulous 10. And I think we have 90 to 100,000 uh, incarcerated individuals. So this was a very rare young man who managed 26 years. And it still took 14 months with the state prosecutor working with me to get the uh, case to the judge and have the judge agree that he should be released on lifetime probation. Anyway, that's what I do, but um, I think um, Paula had asked me to talk a little bit about just dealing with juvenile clients. You know, are there differences when you represent someone that is so young? Uh, I represent people that were young at the time of their crime. I haven't had personal experience other than several juveniles that have been charged as an adult. I don't work in our juvenile system. Um, one thing that I noticed today, California governor signed a, a Senate bill uh, that is going to require uh, a 15 year old or younger who's charged with a crime, they are going to be required to meet with an attorney before they are interrogated by the police. This is new in California, I just saw it today. Um, and I thought, with all the brain science, why 15 and younger? We know they're not really grown even when they're 18. But this is a start, and it said that this is um, representation that, a that can't be waived. So a, a kid couldn't come in and say, you know, I, I want to confess, I want to confess. If they're 15 or younger, they're going to have to talk to an attorney before law enforcement can question that. Uh, anyway, thank you. Looking forward to your questions.